Hello, I am Minecraft Phenom08, and this is episode 60 in my Automate Everything Minecraft series. In today's episode, I'm going to be working on automating a few things for the mod actually additions, because I actually need to up my item transportation game. Now, currently for my item transportation to my ore processing center, I'm using trains, and it's a really, really cool system, but it's just kind of limited in in so far as how many items it can actually transport. I do have it set up relatively well, but the thing is I have a lot of item generation. And over the last, I don't know, 10, 10 or 15 episodes, I'd have added a lot of energy generation. And the thing is, I haven't just added energy generation, I have added some, some more uh, tier six void ore miners in the process. And I've done this off camera, uh, currently, I have all of them shut off because I am just stuffed with ore right now. I have a bunch of ore here, and then I have a bunch of items that still need to be transported back to this main base from my ore processing center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another system to transport items to and from that location so that uh, I can process more items and get them back here in the form that I can store them uh, effectively in mass quantities and that's because I have black hole units for things like iron ingots, copper ingots, diamonds, emeralds, etc, etc but I do not have those set up for the ores and so currently my storage cells are becoming full and that's kind of a problem so hopefully this will alleviate that. So the first thing I need to do is I actually need to make a few atomic reconstructors now these things are pretty basic to make, but they are required to make uh, lots of different things from the mod actually additions. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and make a few of these, or automate that, automate it, and then make a few of them. And so we can try to set up an automation for these guys. Now it's not actually too difficult to do this, thankfully enough. So uh, right now I'm gonna start off with two. I'm going to need a redstone torch uh, because I may need to change its mode and uh, we'll see what I mean here in a little bit. I'm going to need an item vac or a, uh, I think it's called a vacuum chest. I'm going to need a few of these. I might need some filters. I very likely will need some filters. So let's grab some filters. Um, I won't need that many, but whatever. I'm going to need Emmy interfaces at least two of them. I am going to need a pressure plate of some sort. So let's just grab a regular stone pressure plate. And I do have that automated, so that's fantastic. Uh, if you've watched my channel, obviously I'm going to need some uh, something to connect it up to the uh, applied energetic system so we can grab that. I may be able to use only one import bus here. That's going to be what I'm going to try anyways. And so let's see. Is there anything else that I know I need? I don't think so. So let's get started. I do have a location where I plan to build this. And that would be in my Applied Energistics building here. Uh, down here I have a little automation set up to make a few different things here. And it makes... Uh, Fluix crystals, pure fluix crystals, and uh, pure certus crystals. This system is actually going to be pretty similar to this system right here. So, uh, actually, I need some. I need droppers. I do realize that, and I should be able to grab two automatic precision droppers here. And these things are pretty fantastic. I really like these. Okay, there we go. And then, uh, let's see here. Where exactly do I want to build this? So I think... I would think I'm going to build this into the floor here. So for right now, let's just take a hunk out of this. And I think my atomic reconstructors uh, are going to go here and here. I think what I'm going to do... Uh, to power these guys because I do need to power them. I'm going to grab an energy cell and I'm going to grab a trusty RTG. And if you've watched some of my uh, more recent videos, you'll know that RTGs are awesome 
and they produce quite a bit of power, at least the Californium RTGs do, and they will produce uh, that 400 RF per tick until the end of time. So that is fantastic. We can set this uh, energy cell up to be output to the left and to the right. I will need to change the mode on these guys. Uh, they will need to be on pulse mode. At least I believe, yeah, they're going to be on pulse mode. So uh, the pressure plates are actually going to go right here and here. And I don't think I will need those anymore. Uh, I'm also going to grab some stone to try to make this look a little bit nicer here in a little bit. And then, actually, I need to destroy that real quick. Because what I need to do is set up my vacuum chests because they actually need to be right here and right here. Um, I'm going to tap these down to a range of one so they will only be able to grab things right here and that's going to be because I'm going to have a few systems that may conflict here in a little bit or crafts that may conflict so I need to set up two of these and have them kind of be separate. Uh, the only block space I really care about is the one right above and can I actually do that? I don't think that will work to be honest. So we can go ahead and get rid of the show range thing. Let's put some stone here and here. Now I should be able to put my uh, pressure plates down. And once items fall on the pressure plates it should give a pulse to the atomic reconstructor. I just realized. I might have a problem here because oh yeah I haven't set up the filters yet that's why so I will need to whitelist things on the filters and that is definitely how I'm gonna do this so the next step would be to get some automatic precision droppers here and what we can do is I think set them up like this and then we can put our ME interfaces right here. We should already have available channels because I think on the underside we're using one channel. So this would be two, three, four, and five. Uh, if you've played with the Planet Energistics, you know that you have eight channels on a regular cable here. So we have plenty. Um, okay, so let's test this out real quick. Uh, so one thing you can make with the atomic reconstructors is Restonia crystals which is just redstone to redstone and crystals with just a little bit of power here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a whitelist here on this guy right here needs to whitelist redstone and crystals. So if I throw redstone and crystals, they will get sucked up by this thing. As you can see there in there, but if I throw a redstone down, they should not. Okay, so I'm going to need a different pressure plate, I think, is what's going on right there. So let's see here. I do have a couple of different pressure plates that I have automated. Let's see if I can't use one of them. I might be able to use the gold pressure plates. I'm not really sure, to be honest. Okay, that looks like it worked fantastic now one thing I am worried about is sweet is that um, if I throw like huge amounts of items on here that actually I might be able to get my problem to appear if I just grab some redstone throw it in here because this pressure plate is down and is pressed down, it will not pulse like I want it to. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to do that. Um, I don't think I want it in deactivation mode. You know what? That Weirdly enough, that might be the way to go anyways. If I set this to a deactivation mode, it will just pulse constantly.
Okay, the item jumped. It wasn't supposed to jump. Anyways. If I set him to pulse, they'll constantly be going. I kind of don't want that to happen. Okay, first off, we're going to whitelist uh, cobblestone for right now. That way, this thing doesn't keep eating things. Mm. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to think about this little problem I have here. And I'm going to see if I can't uh, come up with another way to get redstone signal to this. And once I do that, I'm going to be right back. Okay, so I figured out a little redstone uh, trick to get this to work, and I've already built one of them, so I'm going to go ahead and build the other one uh, right now. So what we have is a couple of redstone torches to invert a signal, and what we're going to do is we are going to take the redstone signal from the pressure plate, and we are going to hook up a redstone conduit here. We are going to make sure that this is input, and then we are going to run it down here to where this will be output on red. It needs to be output on the same color. And what happens when you get a redstone signal there? It will light that up and it will invert the signal down here and it will cause, cause a pulse. The thing is, if I set it up like this, we're still in the same spot where you get one pulse. However, what I can do is I can tap into this redstone torch over here and uh, use a comparator here to get a repeating signal. And how I'm going to do that is like this. I'm going to set this to be uh, output on green. and It does need to be strong output. I do need to check that. Uh, this will be nothing. This will be nothing. And then this right here will be output or uh, input on green sorry and so what will happen is once we have an item on here it will pulse now I actually can uh, lengthen the pulse here or the time between pulses by doing that okay so that's fantastic that should work perfectly so the next thing I need to do is I need to reset my automatic precision dropper my uh, yeah two automatic precision droppers because I did move them so let's go ahead and do that also I can get rid of or I can uh, make this look a little bit nicer I think these are already set to one range that's good cool so I think my droppers will be right here and right here and then just like before I'm going to have my ME interfaces on top and then uh, yes I do have some cover cable with me still so I can just hook that up like so and then boom okay so right here this one is okay so it's this one that can do the restonia crystals what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a pattern for this. And it's actually pretty easy to do because it's just one redstone equals one redstone and crystal. Okay, so we have, let's get rid of some crap again. Uh, one redstone. equals one Restonia crystal. So let's uh, put that in. We do need to go over here. And that would be this one right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to request some Restonia crystals. Uh, for right now, I'm just gonna do 10. So that should Okay, so I already see that I should probably build up a round. That way the items can't get out because uh, it, they're jumping, and I don't want them to jump out. So let's 
actually do that. Actually, what we need to do is we need to get the items back into the system. But that won't be too hard. And actually, I won't have to use any channels for it. Because what I can do is I can hook into this right here from my atomic reconstruct or not atomic reconstructors from my um, vacuum vacuum chests eh. yes okay so I'm going to use item conduits and this should be rather easy to be honest and I probably already have some So these need to be extract, always on, extract, always on, and they just need to go into here. Okay, so let's see here. We have nothing crafting up. Let's go ahead and say make um, 20 of these. Fantastic, all of it made its way into the applied energistic system. That is exactly what I wanted to see there. No problems at all. Okay, so it looks like the little bunker here worked out. Um, and this should have enough range to pick up anything, even if they jump to like this block space right here. Because if we look at that, there we go. Okay, so there are some things, some more things I want to go ahead and automate. And one of them is going to be kind of vital to the rest of this episode. Because like I said, I need to move some items around uh, in a more efficient fashion than I currently can do. I could use, uh, I definitely could use applied energistics or ender chests or other things like that. But I've already done that. And I feel like uh, trying to do something a little bit different. And I've never really used item relays. And that's kind of what I plan to do today. So before I actually get to that, I want to automate, I think, palace. Okay, so that's just lapis. Okay, so actually what I can do is I can just look up the atomic reconstructor real fast and right click on that and then see what I want to automate here. Um, I definitely want to do diamond, diamantine. Yeah, I definitely want to do that. Um, I'll probably do some more of these later. I, I will not worry about most of them right now. So for right now, I just want to... I think that's the right recipe there. So... Oh, I need to actually make the recipe. And then... Let me make sure I'm actually doing this one right. Yes, I am. Okay, cool. And then uh, right now, uh, I need. I want to make the advanced item laser relays. So how we do that is we need this stuff right here, but I need the item laser relay for that. I actually need a fluid laser relay and to make a fluid laser relay we need an energy laser relay so this is why i'm setting up the atomic reconstructor because i can make these like this and let's go ahead and pump out lots of these i won't actually need that many but with that i can go ahead and make a recipe so let's go ahead and run over here And we can stick, let's do these over here. And so that means I need to make sure to whitelist this and this um, right here. I need to drop these over here. They should get, oh, that was unintended. Okay, so perfect. Um, and I realize I might have a little issue with these because it actually, these cycle back and forth. Oh my bad. Totally forgot I could do that. Okay, so that's good. 
I've got that white listed over here and then next I want to actually do this one over here actually you know what I just realized I don't have to have this inter intermediate step at all because this laser will keep firing until I get what I want so what I can do is I can just set up the whitelist to be item laser relay in the future if I do need the fluid laser relays I can just go ahead and whitelist that over here and then set up grafting recipe for that but um, yeah this will actually work well I believe it will anyways so let's try it out so the theoretical this will do that and then we need to place this in this advanced or automatic precision dropper and let's see if we can't make these except I did the wrong thing shoot I need the item why did I do fluid that was dumb okay so let's try this again uh, I need the item laser, laser. Okay, so actually, because I did put this in here, if I request a fluid laser, I'm going to get some item lasers. So if I do this, there we go. Okay, so now I can set up the recipe correctly. Because that's the only thing that that uh, vacuum hopper will pull out. So I just need to reset the recipe here. Okay, so this recipe is no good. It's this recipe I want. Fantastic. Okay, so I can go ahead and cancel that because, yeah, that's dead. Uh, let's go ahead and actually tell this to make 10 more. Make sure this works 100% before I move on here. And it looks like it did. Cool. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is I actually need to make it into the advanced item laser relays. And I don't think that will be too much of a problem. Um... Not 100% sure on that, but I don't think it will be. And if it is, well, I can deal with it. So let's try to make 100. That's fantastic. Uh, it's it's going to have to craft more of these, but that shouldn't be a problem. It should not have a problem with that. It's getting batches of, say, like 8 or so. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is... If I'm going to set up this system that I plan to set up, which won't take very long to set up, I'm going to need a few things. Uh, first off, I'm going to need some modular storage, and I think all of these are empty. Um, yeah. And then I'm going to need some item. I'm going to need these guys. I'm also probably going to need a wrench from the mod actual editions. And I forget what it's called. Uh, that sounds correct. Laser wrench. So I'm going to go ahead and craft one of these guys. Do I have any Inori crystals? I do. I just don't have any of these. And I think I have those automated. So I don't think that'll be a problem. Oh, well, fooey. So what I'm going to do real fast is I'm just going to wait on the wrench and the rest of the item, the item laser relays to get crafted. And once all that's done, I will be right back. And that didn't actually take very long, but we have our wrench right here. And then our relays should be right here. So that is good. We have plenty of those. I don't think we'll need any of that 
So what I need to do is I need to go ahead and start setting this up. So actually that does not have anything in it. Okay. Okay, so I need a storage module. Um, just one of these to put in here. And then see if I can't remember how to do this. Okay, so I don't I don't think I need to whitelist or blacklist anything. I'm not 100% sure though. So let's throw those in there. Okay, so hmm. Let's see here. I don't actually Okay, I just want to let's just blacklist. I truly am not familiar with these things, having not really used them in the past. Hold a compass to modify. Can't connect. The relays are either part of the same network that stored relay isn't the same type or... Let's see here. You know what, let's see what this has to say. Soon you'll find that sometimes you need to white and blacklist. Okay, I don't actually. Before we start, the item laser relay system is more complicated than its fluid and energy counterpart. However, it is an extremely powerful way to manage and transport your items. When connecting an item relay to any block that stores or handles items, it will basically know about the slots that they have and what items are in them. That alone isn't particularly useful, however, the item interface can interact with those items. Check out each chapter to find out how. Okay, so I might need the item interface here. The item interface is the way to interact with an item laser relay network. On its own, such a network will just know about all of the items and slots that are connect that connected containers have. The item interface, however, can be used to directly interact with these items. The way the item interface works is that it basically pretends to be a very large chest containing every slot of every container that is connected. That's going to be ridiculous uh, if I use these anyways. What this means is that you can use a hopper or any other item transform mechanic on the item interface and it will function like a chest being able to accept items and have items pulled out of it but instead of any items being stored inside of the item interface they will go to and be pulled from the laser relay network to actually connect an item interface to a network just place an item laser relay next to one Interesting. Okay, so let me try something because I actually don't want to. That's not how I thought they worked. But if I could spell right, I wouldn't have these issues. Okay, so compass. Oh, maybe, maybe it's because I don't have that set up. 
Nope, that doesn't appear to have fixed anything. So this is currently a lower priority than this. So theoretically, I was hoping that those would move over here. But that's not how this is working. So what I'm going to do real fast is I'm going to go off camera. I'm going to try to figure these things out and if I can still even use these. And then I'm going to be right back. Okay, so it seems that I have a working system here. What I've done is I have the same modular storage unit over here. I have advanced item laser relays. And the thing I've changed is I have an item interface here with a relay on top of it. And I can pull items out of this uh, with automatic means, such as an item conduit here. So I think what I'm going to go ahead and do, and let's break this and see if this is going to work, because I think this is how I'm going to have to set this up. Is I'm going to whip this out. And let me make sure that this is still going to work. Uh, if I put things into here, I think that they will get pulled out. Yes. Okay, the thing is, uh, let's speed this up because I think this is my bottleneck now. So if I grab 15 of these guys, I should be able to speed that up. And I don't think I'm going to need a lot of this stuff, to be honest. So let's do that. Uh, quickly, I'm going to grab several stacks of iron ingots here. And I do have over 100 million iron ingots. So that's pretty awesome. Okay, that's what we want to see because that is moving the items quickly into here. Okay, so that is the proof of concept that I needed. And that's all that this is right here. So let's go ahead and pick up all of this stuff and then uh, get started on my actual, how I want to do this. So this won't be too, too bad here. Uh, what I'm going to do is under the bridge here, I'm actually going to have some of these item relays. I'm going to have them all the way down on either side here. And what's going to happen is First, I need to go down here. Okay, where are my chests? Okay, so this is uh, the chest that takes items and puts them into the cargo managers above so that the ores can be taken away. So what I need to do is put one here. Um, let's do this. And then let's see. I don't know if I can go through blocks with these. Uh, so we're going to have to just try it out. If I can't, I'm probably just going to have to... Um, I don't know what I'm going to have to do. It looks like I can. Okay, so that's fantastic. That's what I wanted to see. So that's one side of it. Uh, and then I need the items that are coming back. And they need to also find their way somewhere. Not sure where yet. Okay, so there's that. Okay, so where do these cargo managers go? They go right here. Okay, so that actually seems to be kind of easy. Uh, I might actually be able to reach from there. So if I right click that, right click that, okay, cool. And actually, I do not need this here um, because I need an item interface here. And actually, no. What I can do is I can put the item interface right here. 
and then I can put my laser relay here. I can do some item conduit right here. It needs to be extract. It needs to have as many speed upgrades as I can put in. And then those items will just go right here. Okay, so now we just connect this up. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some speed upgrades, uh, 15 to be exact. And what I need to do is I need to connect a bunch of relays. And that's gonna take a little while. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do this off camera. I'm just going to string these along the bottom of the bridge, uh, kind of like so, right click, and uh, so on and so forth, and I'm going to go all the way to my ore processing base, which is the, the other end of this bridge, and once I get there, I will be right back. Okay, I am here at my ore processing facility. So the last thing I need to do is I need to hook up this last item re laser relay to there, uh, which is the export center, or all of these items here get taken to the trains to get transported back to my main base. So we just need to connect this up, and theoretically, we're going to start seeing these be pulled out uh, with this item laser re relay network. So... Um, yeah, so hopefully that all works. Um, there is a way I should be able to check this out if it's working. Is if I go over here and I. Here's what I can do I can say extract on black and then insert on black. Uh, so basically, the only way that this thing should get items is from right here. And. It looks like I'm not getting anything. Um, if I... Okay, so what I can do is to absolutely triple check here is to get rid of that. I am not getting anything. So either I have a problem somewhere or uh, I didn't set something up correctly. So let me, let me do this. Does that help? It does not seem to have helped. And this is insert. I don't know if I'm gonna have to do this on all of the laser relays here. So let's see here, let's go back to my or receiver. And let's see, let's, um, it's actually a blacklist cobblestone here. Okay, so it looks like it's working, because I see items right here. I think what I needed to do is I needed to go ahead and blacklist this. So let's go back over and double check that this is working. Uh, not there. We should start seeing some items here. It is working, fantastic. So what I need to do is I need to go ahead and set this back to green. Um, green and green. So this can get all of the items. Fantastic. So that is perfect. Um, what I need to do off camera is I need to set up the other half of that system, uh, but it's the same thing. So I can go ahead and do that off camera. I just have the items coming back from the ore processing center right now through this laser, but I can also send items to be processed with this other laser, and that's why I have them set up on the other side of this bridge. But like I said, it's literally the same thing over again, so I can go ahead and do that off camera. Anyways, so in today's episode, I set up some automation for actual editions, the mod actual editions, so that I can make a few new things automatically with uh, this little system right here. And it did work really well. Uh, I did not have any problems crafting the rest crystal and the item laser relays that I crafted. So that is nice. It seems like, uh, at least as of right now, a pretty flawless system, works really well. And then I set up some item 
laser relays uh, to get uh, processed items back to here and like I said I'm going to set up the other one to send unprocessed items to the processing center and that should help augment the train system I have right here so anyways if you like today's episode definitely give it a like if you enjoy watching automation in modded minecraft consider subscribing to my channel because that's kind of what I do anyways signing off I am minecraft phenom08 and I will see you next time